So here is a shot of my trusty test bench. This is a EBGAX58 classified motherboard with uh, it supports three-way SLI and I'm actually going to be swapping it out for a different board and uh, hold on one second and I'll do the swap. So the new motherboard on the test bench is this SR2 and this thing is gigantic. I'm sure you can see from the transition in the YouTube video from the other EVGA to the SR2. This is incredibly huge. I won't go over uh, the layout of the board because probably a hundred people have done the SR2 before so I'm not going to go over that but wow this guy is just massive. So he is going to be part of or be the main part of my uh, new folding at home rig. I have little computers here and there folding at home but now I'm just going to have it all on this one here and just dedicate this to a full time folding at home computer. I'm going to get, uh, well I'm not going to get, I'm going to use uh, a pair of Xeon L5518 processors there are 2.13 gigahertz quad core processors so I'm going to be populating the CPU sockets with those and then I'm going to be running 6 gigs of RAM for each processor folding doesn't take that much RAM and I just figured I would just do three twos and three twos up there and as far as this I'm going to attempt uh, a few things um, like staggering uh, each slot because I'll run a four-way SLI here but I'm going to use um, kind of like PCI Express extenders to make some taller than others so every other one will be taller than the one before it and I'm hoping that it'll uh, allow better airflow um, rather than having the cards stacked so close together they can't breathe. I'm, I'm going to experiment with it and see and then I'm also probably going to put this near a window air conditioning unit uh, especially in the summertime and have um, the window air conditioning unit maybe blow to those three fans and then those three fans can kind of push it across the uh, graphics cards because that's going to generate the most heat. As far as the CPUs go I'm just going to use some Hyper 212 um, from Cooler Master heat sinks and fans and I think that'll be plenty but I'm gonna go ahead and get the board all prepped and then I will continue the video from there and do a little walk around of what's going on okay so here's the SR2 folder and actually right now it's folding away uh, there's a 570 and a 580 um, I'm actually just trying to break those two cards in folding and then the two Xeons I've got are folding as well and I there's the uh, Hyper 212s and I've got uh, two fans each on them and then obviously the two video cards I've got them spaced apart right now um, just trying to go easy on them make sure they don't overheat but this board is incredible um, I mean as you can see a 580 is no small card and you can see how much extra room there is as far as the PCI Express extensions go I was going to use these to kind of uh, offset the cards to make one higher one lower to see if I could get better airflow um, really didn't work that well um, I'm glad these were pretty cheap because uh, that plan kind of crapped out on me the best way to do it would be actually to use the um, flat cable type like this and then using them then you can kind of position them forward and backwards as well too uh, I think this would work a little better as far as spacing them out uh, but you'd have to have a you know a different design of case that had you know some um, brackets a little bit you know higher and then you could spread the cards out you know have the first one there the second one the third one the fourth one or even more I suppose at that point you might be able to utilize all seven of them in this particular motherboard that would be uh, definitely the better way to go um, 
if we were going to use some kind of riser or extension. So anyway, that'll kind of uh, wrap up the uh, folding update there. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty beast of a uh, motherboard. Uh, currently I'm using a 950 watt PC power and cooling silencer Mark III, or excuse me, Mark II, uh, to power this thing. And because uh, the actual board itself takes quite a few power connectors, each CPU has an 8 pin and a 6 pin. Um, the 6 pin is optional. And then each, um, excuse me, there's also one extra 6 pin for the graphics card for the PCI Express, some extra power for the PCI Express slots. So uh, if you were to fully load this thing, I would almost guarantee that you would have dual power supplies at that point. You know, if you were to put four graphics cards in there, man, with two 8 pins each, and then you were to, you know, bump up your Xeon system, higher powered ones, and then you were going to use, you know, the extra six pins for the uh, CPU power. Yeah, I would almost bet at that point you'd be looking at a dual power supply rig, because I don't even think any of the 1500 watt ones have enough um, six plus two pins to, to run all that and then power both of the Xeons. It would be quite a quite a power hungry machine but you could do some uh, some pretty good damage with it currently uh, we're folding and uh, the CPUs do a decent job of folding sometimes uh, they're folding more than the 580 but generally the 580 does fold you know about as much or a little bit more than the dual Xeons there so uh, kind of impressive for the uh, 580 you know in folding performance anyway it's uh, out folding dual Xeon uh, four core processors with eight threads so we have 16 threads total and the uh, 580 usually nudges it out pretty good the 570 however you know it's it's a, it's a little behind the uh, Xeons which is still no slouch anyway so that will uh, wrap up my folding at home update and my new folding rig this will definitely be my full-time folding rig uh, no more folding you know on uh, other computers this this guy that's what this guy's main objective is going to be and uh, yeah so anyway that'll wrap it up and as always thank you for watching